one that is one of like the I, that one I feel like it's super powerful for me so then there is this one we went for six days to high mountains with uh, in the ice with uh, in high camp and in this place that it's called Altar this mountain it's super technical and it is it is super hard to to do so we do need like to go with people with a lot of experience and we do need to train a lot and we went there for six days like the last expedition uh was made like in the 80s and uh, in the 90s and like another group went a month earlier so it was like it is a weird path so we were there for six days in altitude and it was super cold every day it was super hyper cold like i was all the time like trembling and it was like oh my god I was like oh, I'm so cold <laughs> and I'm generally super like uh, I I don't I like cold but it was super cold and I was suffering I felt like oh my god this is super painful and then like at the third day I was but why am I complaining like why am I just resistant to this and then it just I said, I, I take a breath and I was, okay, stop resisting. And the cold was there. The cold is not over, of course, but as I stopped resisting, I stopped suffering. So yeah, I, I accepted the cold and it was okay. I have to accept things. Like it is important for me not to just it it is it takes more effort more energy to be just saying no 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 i'm cold i'm cold just why am i not accepting the cold because i'm here i i can't do anything i have to accept so i find out i i saw there that um my mind always like our mind creates our own our own limits so I was, ah, I'm cold, I can't be okay. So I changed, I shifted and I was, I'm cold. It's part of it. And then it was cool because my body didn't, wasn't investing so much energy denying. And I was kind of getting warmer every time and it, the cold was there, but it wasn't that painful anymore <laughs> because my mind is so making it painful <laughs> well and you mentioned you had two examples is there another one my grandmother used to tell me that she learned to cook by watching only watching others cooking and when she got married because she uh, she had uh, arranged marriage and she didn't know how to she didn't know how to cook so she started to make and then in the making she was doing and I learned to, I, I'm, I do learn a lot by just looking at how things are. And I think that's the lesson from my grandmother. She always uh, used to say, okay, stay there and just look, just see what is, what is happening. So I'm kind of like that. And I'm super slow <laughs> at doing things because I'm a bit scared of doing things. But it's like, it takes me time, but I have to, I have to just make my own that also like it takes me time but it is a way of learning for me that's something that i've understood but also like to reimagine is not all for me reimagine education is not only you have to do this you have to learn this you have to la, 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 just finding our own ways of learning our own rhythms or our needs and yeah just to see that and i think that that came from my from my grandmother when she was I, I learned to cook just by looking at how she cooked and many years later I started to do her recipes but like many many like 10 or 12 years later so it is a way like it comes with time our connection with our territories it is a way of um, of experiencing life and of listening to other voices. And for me, 
mountains and, and rocks are my gurus completely because it is like there is a mediation there where you just you just everything it, it's clear there and it is a way for me to unlearn life like to get to places in myself by walking the mountains by doing by i don't know going to the eyes in the mountains i find places in myself where everything is more clear like where i i can see myself deeply and for me also that's like a a lot of inspiration and I'm doing this research project that it's the game that I'm making <laughs> and for myself where I'm I'm going with the question like how do we co-create with mountains how do we co-create with nature and how do we make a life out of this connection because there is like um our indigenous here in the Americas we have a lot of indigenous people still on territories And their connection is with the land, with the territory, and our urban, uh, from the urban places, they, it's, it is more difficult to get connected to, to the territory because we are on this, like, on these uh, houses and we are on the streets and the idea of nature seems away. But when we start to do mountains, when we go climbing, it is like we come back to that that roots like we come back to those messages we come back to those gurus that makes us actually wake up in a way and wake up from a dream i feel and this dream of of uh, capitalism modernity that we need to just buy 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 and things like that so it is kind of this research that is taking me i don't know where but it is like a way of understanding nature as our guru and how can we co-create with it how can we reimagine our living or understanding our learnings and our lives and how this is part of our we are we also are part and are part of the territory so what what is the message that we have now uh, why why do we live in this time now and what is telling what is the territory and what are we saying to life So I'm kind of on that research that to reimagine education. Yeah, I, I like the, what um, Munir said also, like he said that it's not reimagining, it's reclaiming. And I feel like both, like first to reclaim what it's from our ancestors. What is it that is there? What messages are there? And to reclaim what it is already in our lands, in our bodies, in our even in our spiritual, in spiritual awareness, we have to just reclaim. And I feel like reimagine it's a way of doing it because we, we are exploring. And if we can sit and reimagine other ways of educating or, or learning or sharing or, or living, we can maybe start to find paths and when we find other paths we can explore ourselves i feel and when we explore ourselves we might find other beautiful things that the system can't can't let us find if we are on that path so i feel like the importance of reimagine education is to to just find ourselves and find our beauties and find our darkness and, and, and in general find better ways of living. And if it comes from our ways of learning, it is what it is. And it, it, I think it's super necessary. What I liked a lot about the conference was the opportunity to bridge Uh, pedagogies that are, are not mainstream and that are from global south and to put them into a place where academic language is like the, the mainstream right and I, I was left a lot with for example the pedagogy of Ubuntu 
with uh, how Four Arrows talked about uh, speaking to birds and mountains and like conversations around other ways of understanding education from feelings or from our desires beyond only the methodological approach. And I feel like that is something that it was super important for me to see people from the South, because I do feel sometimes that it's like there, this discourses that are in the top of our mouth because it also belongs to our territories like it, the north in a way to say oh this exists like in, and we can actually apply them and we can just take whatever we feel like like it, it kind of it is so strong the pedagogies from the south sometimes that comes from indigenous places that it's so rooted in the territory it's, it's they they bring so much truth that when you put them to a scholars that are more academic, even they, with all the structures in their minds, can relate to that because it is super deep. So I'm, I'm left with that. Like there is a lot of still of pedagogies from indigenous perspectives that could, could just nurture a lot uh, like mainstream academia. And I, I think that I saw that a lot in the conference. I think that we need more pedagogies from Latin America and from Asia. Like, well, Asia is not global south, but we had and and from we had some from India. We did from like from Africa, very few. But I think that to have like more of of alternative pedagogies from the south, I think that that could be super interesting to have. Because if we are reimagining education, we need to get out of the structures. And to get out of the structures, I feel like it is important to listen to these voices that are not in the structures, that are the counter voices, like the, the people that are not in mainstream spaces. And as even for academics, like I'm part of academia, I'm on learning that too. So for me, it's so nurturing to see like how other people are actually applying other pedagogies that are not mainstream, that are not in, in a like package. Mm -hmm.